Hey SBI fans, I'm Caleb Logic from Fizzle.co and DIYVideoGuy.com, but you might remember me from SBI podcast number 95 or for doing the videos for Pat's book, Let Go or Breakthrough Blogging. And the other day I was asking Pat, you know, what's the video question that you get the most? And he said, bar none, everyone asks me how to use ScreenFlow because it's actually the program he uses exclusively and has for the past few years to edit all of his videos. And I just put together a video tutorial for the DIY video guide and I wanted to give it to the SPI audience for free because Pat gets that question so much. So without further ado, let's uh, dive into how to use ScreenFlow for Mac. One of the best ways to get into shooting video is to just record your screen and talk over it. And the best way to do a screencast on a Mac is ScreenFlow. It's a $99 program that can do everything you need it to do. A uh, friend of mine, Pat Flynn, Smart Passive Income, he actually uses ScreenFlow exclusively for editing all of his videos, not just his and not just his like screen recordings and stuff. So fairly powerful tool. Um, and I'm gonna walk through exactly how to use it, how to you know, record your screen, what settings to use, how to do some like simple transitions, bring in other footage, and some of the little uh, tips and tricks that I've learned using it. So let's dive into what the interface looks like first. So this is just a screen recording of another tutorial that I'm doing for this guide. And you can see that you have a basic, you know, viewer window here. You have all your settings here on the right side. You have your timeline down at the bottom. and so I've already recorded my screen um, for this particular video, but I'll show you in a little bit how to actually record your screen too when you make these. So, you know, the basic, the basic tools are there's play here. Um, you can see you got your zoom down here to like see the timeline at different um, sizes. You can see that um, you can record directly into a microphone. You can record your screen. Another thing you can do is you can concurrently also record uh, your webcam and you can record your computer sound. So you can have four different um, things that it's recording at the same time and bring those in and play with them all in ScreenFlow. You can also bring in other audio and other video that you've shot or have music you wanna put in. And I mean, you can use this like a full on video editor. It's fairly complex and fairly, um, advanced for a $100 program. And I uh, actually recommend people just get this to start and then learn how to use it. And if they really need to go to Final Cut Pro 10 or something like that and get more advanced, they can. But this is so straightforward and um, easy to use out of the box that I just recommend to try this first instead. So let's now look at what this side right panel does, all the different things you can do. So if I select the recording and you can see selected it down here and you can then see I can you know drag it and rotate it and stuff if I want to but once it's selected you have a number of things you can do over on the right side you can adjust scale you can uh, rotate it so if you want to like tilt it and like tilt it this way and like have some cool effect if you're going to then um, theoretically here let me let me fix the, the x scale that's not the, usually the scale you want to want to use but let's say this was like a powerpoint slide or something and you have like a title and some bullets over here and then you could have i mean you could have this you could have this you know this video playing like while you're giving a presentation or something um and i gotta find a clip where it's actually moving but um then you could you know you could have this little fancy uh, angled little video or something and there are some people that do this fairly well they take a screen flow portion that they record and then they tilt it a little bit and they zoom it really big and so it's like a zoom in look at a screen but then what they do is they add a video action and then they have it tilt the other way so it looks like they're panning around just a static web page or something and then they'll blur part of it too and so it'll look super fancy and then they're just using something like screen flow to record it so you know you can get as fancy as you want but realistically you know, even just this and talking over some slides that you make or showing someone how to use a piece of software like I'm doing or how to code or anything really 
just recording your screen and talking over it is good. It's what people can learn from just as simple as that. Another thing you can do is when you have, you know, you record the webcam too, you could start with you talking in the webcam full screen and screen flow, and then you can have it, you know, slide down to the corner, slide down over here, and then it's like a little talking head picture in picture of like you talking in through the through the tutorial and the screen recording that you're doing, but it, there's still a person there, it's still a person talking, um, and it's a little bit more personal than just having a screen recording and you having no idea what this person that's speaking is like. If you also go to audio properties, if I select the audio track um, in the microphone, you can increase or decrease the volume. You can do ducking, which is if the volume goes below a certain level, it'll take it all the way down to zero. So if you had like a weird hissing noise or like a, a fan that was like humming and like every time you talked, you could hear it, but then it was just making noise throughout the video. You could add ducking to a certain percent depending on how, uh, how loud that thing is and then it would cut it all the way to zero when, when you weren't speaking or when the volume didn't go above that percent that you picked. You can then, if you, let's say you record it into a mixer and you only record it into the left speaker. Um, you can quickly mix the input into mono and it'll change it to go to both speakers instead of just into the left or the right side. So that's just a simple click right here. Um, they have some effects, uh, removing background noise, kind of works, kind of doesn't. Um, and then they have some audio filters that you can add um, just from different Apple ones that are built into other Apple products like GarageBand and then if you add any yourself. So then the next one is screen recording properties. So you gotta make sure you're clicked on a actual screen recording. And one thing you can do is you can increase the zoom of the pointer. So you can see the mouse there is huge, like 500%. Um, if you're recording on a high resolution, like I'm recording this one, sometimes increasing the pointer is helpful for people. Sometimes it just looks weird. You can also add a click effect. So let's go ahead and play this and see if I'm clicking around at all anywhere. Um, but the click effect basically is like this little circle that pulses out. Um, and I really want to find something that I can click on, but I'm not seeing not seeming to find one. Um, so it has this little circle. There you go. There you go. There's the circle. You see it? Okay. That's called the radar effect. Um, and if you use, there's invert, which um, we can probably see what that is in a second, but um, yeah, that doesn't, I'm not even seeing what shows up there. But radar is a good one if you wanna actually show, um, show the pointer. You can also make a circle around it or like make a dark circle to see where it is. Um, you can pick an image if you want it to be a bunny or something. You can do whatever you want with that. You can also make a sound on click and then show keystrokes is another thing you can do. So when you're um, teaching some sort of software and you want to show people like which keyboard buttons you're pressing when you're walking through the tutorial, which um, I'm trying to do everything by mouse in these tutorials because visually that's a little bit easier to learn but when I'm using these programs, I'm using a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts and stuff. So if you want to show those on screen, you can click this here. It'll show uh, all the keys you press and it'll have them pop up on the screen, like down in the lower left, or you can move it like with the height here, change the font, do whatever you want. If you go to uh, call out, you can then highlight um, different things, you can zoom on things, you can blur them, you can change opacity, you can add uh, annotations and boxes and stuff. So, you know, if I was going to add an annotation, I would then, you know, you could pick the color and then you could drag it out like, oh, then I click the export button, you know, and then you can change what it is or a square and you can draw more things if you want and you can then go over and put text in them and add a text box and put that in the box. And so you can get, I mean, you can get it out of control basically. 
um, if you're adding a bunch of stuff, but you know, just know that there are some options and if you spend some time designing them and picking the fonts that look good, you know, they, they, can, they can work for the videos you're trying to make. And then the last thing uh, is your media. So the recording that I did and the audio, so my screen and the audio into the microphone that I recorded for these, plus I can add new media from wherever on my computer or add recording and it'll start an additional recording that you're just gonna put on uh, into this same ScreenFlow file that you can then drag down and edit some more or whatever. But you know, if you shot uh, like this where you did a camera and you did ScreenFlow, you could edit all of that in ScreenFlow just by adding this footage in and lining up the audio with the video and going back and forth and cutting between the two. You wouldn't have to get into a more advanced editing program than, than ScreenFlow. And you could, uh, oh, I just, I forgot to mention this one part. We'll just record it again and talk over it again by adding a new recording. So that's a quick rundown of ScreenFlow. I mean, the last few other things are other than the zoom down here, you have, um, you know, you can drag on top of each other. Um, when you're using a clip, you can always trim it by grabbing the edge and bringing it back. You can split clips by, I believe it's T. I'm going to go with T. Yes, split clip, T. You can add freeze frames. So if you want to actually talk about something longer than you recorded for, uh, just add a freeze frame. And let's, well, I'll show you what this does. So let's say we're here and I want to add a freeze frame of this. So I go add freeze frame. And then if I zoom in really far, you can see that it added a freeze frame of what that was. And I can drag that up and then drag this back. And that won't mess with the timing of my video and audio there. But then I can hold this as long as I want to and talk through it. And then it'll go back to the video um, when the freeze frame is done. So, I mean, you can get fairly advanced in this. You can do things like transitions. Um, you can add starting or ending transitions. You can do like make captions and even export them as captions for files. So you can do quite a bit in ScreenFlow. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to even just start using this if you're comfortable with it to do, you know, camera based video editing, because, you know, if you know how to do stuff quickly, you can bring it in, you can do your text on screen, you can, have your audio and video right there all in one place, then um, yeah, you shouldn't have to switch to something fancier just because it costs more, it has more tools. Just use whatever works to help you get your videos out the door. And that's why I recommend to people just start recording your screen and talking over it. Those are videos too, and you don't even have to be in front of the camera. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.